I've been working with men for almost 10 years. Each time I facilitated a support group, led a men's ministry, or taught a Bible study, I did what I do best. I prepared. This last year, I was separated from family and deployed for 11 months. During that time, God showed me something new. God showed me that He can do so much more than any of my preparations can accomplish. I knew going into this deployment that I would lead a radical men's Bible group, but I didn't know how or who. I trusted God and the mentorship of men like Mike Godowa to guide me. Therefore, I prepared and purchased our first book about leadership. Within days of boarding the ship, the Lord provided three committed men in a reliable venue. It all began with me and two men separate from my RMG group agreeing to meet and study the Bible. This is when the Lord laid on my heart, I got this one, don't do anything. This is around the same time my RMG group studied prayer. During one of those prayer moments, I asked God to do something amazing with my life. I prayed circles around the ship's chapel and I asked God to fill it with men. I'll get back to that point later. I was determined to do nothing, to trust God, and I was committed to just showing up. The men and I met each week and we committed to reading one chapter from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. After reading, we discussed what we read and some of what shed light on, on the different passages. At the conclusion of each meeting, we huddled up together, confessed, prayed, laid hands on one another, and at times we were emotional. Just before Thanksgiving, we started our month long journey home from the Middle East. We were two weeks into our journey and received the worst news a service member can get while deployed. Yep, the ship was ordered to turn around and get back into the fight. During difficult times, men were looking for answers and support through uncertainty, but God was just beginning to build his ministry. More men began to come each week. We witnessed men connect with God, repent, and read his word. I recall at different points of time, the ship's commanding officer encouraged 5,000 sailors and Marines over the intercom to attend the men's Bible study. I couldn't believe my ears. The ship's captain was doing the work for us. Men were coming and God was changing hearts. On one breakthrough occasion during a prayer huddle, a new brother confessed to the group that his wife had left him. He told the man that his wife had packed up his belongings and put them in his car. He was homeless and without a family. During that critical moment, I watched a different brother who had also lost his wife to separation break the huddle. He walked over to the hurting brother, laid his hands on him and prayed for him. At that same moment, another man who was about six foot five, 250 pounds, openly wept. There wasn't a dry eye in the group. I couldn't contain my emotion myself. I was overcome by God's grace and love. I recall following one meeting, a visiting RMG guest leaned in and said to me, I can still see the circles on the floor from your prayers. God answered your request to fill the chairs. He was right. I had made those prayer circles months earlier and I had forgot about them, but God and my friend had not. As the deployment came to an end, some of the men and women made the decision to get baptized on board the ship. Most shipboard baptisms involve a religious water pot and like a small dousing of water to demonstrate their confession of faith. However, this was a different deployment and it called for a real baptism. So for the first time in my 26 years of service, I witnessed a full immersion baptism on board a Navy ship. I also had the honor to participate in the ceremony. To my surprise, news of the baptism spread back home. Somehow through social media or email, the pictures were shared across the ocean. What I didn't know was that people back home were able to share in our joy. The deployment was coming to an end and the Lord was impressing my heart that I was not done. Some men who came through the weekly Bible study shared similar struggles of purity and sexual integrity. So I sensed the need and I agreed to lead a support and recovery group. As an act of faith, I purchased 10 sets of books. And I trusted that God would provide them in. Before returning home, we were able to have one meeting with five committed men. One man was commissioned to lead the group in the state of Washington after returning to finish the last 10 sessions. This left me with five books and I was one day from returning home. Once again, I felt the Lord impressed on me that there was more work to be done. Therefore, I brought the extra books that followed us around the globe here to OBC. And I trust that God will provide men here in our community looking to cleanse their hands and purify their hearts. 
So it started with a couple men looking for answers and deeper connections with God spread throughout the ship and back at home. Since returning, some of the same men have committed to starting their own groups for support, accountability, and deeper connections. When I look back at the past year and all that was accomplished, I'm amazed. What impressed me the most and continues today is I did nothing at all. God showed up and did it all. Can you imagine how much more he can do if we trust more, believe more, and step out more in faith? Thank you.